All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this next example, um, and again, we did some problems like this as well. For the next example, what we're basically going to be doing is writing the equation of the line. So when we want to write the equation of the line, basically what we need to uh, do is be able to identify um, the y-intercept as well as the slope. Because when you guys remember when we were graphing, it was very, very helpful to be able to identify what the slope was and what the y-intercept was, right? Because to graph, basically, if you guys remember, when we had an equation that was in slope-intercept form, you found the slope, or I'm sorry, you found the y-intercept, and then you used the slope to find the next point, and you connected. And there you go. That was your line, all right? So we got to be able to identify the slope and the y-intercept. Now, fortunately for us, this problem already gives us the slope. So that's easy. I can easily plug that into my formula. The problem is, though, we need to identify the y-intercept. And some students will make a mistake and say, well, isn't this the y-intercept? No, this point is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. This point is over here. The y-intercept is right here. So the important thing, the thing I want you guys to understand is, you know, what is the x value at the y-intercept? What is the x value at that point? Zero. So unless you have a point that's like 0, comma something, this is not the y-intercept. This is just a point on the line. All right? And if it's a point on the line, that means it has x and y coordinates. Right? So therefore, this point you can represent as an x, comma, y. Now to go ahead and solve for that, now to go ahead and identify, to find your y, what we're simply going to do is plug in our x and our y coordinates. All right. Now again, how do we multiply? Kojan, could you like look over here for this? Because I'm kind of doing this for you. If you look at this, we're going to multiply a whole number times a fraction. You convert the whole number to a fraction. Remember, when you now we're multiplying two fractions. Excuse me. You multiply directly across. So I have negative three equals twenty-eight over eight plus b. You could have simplified that. Um, obviously, we can reduce this, right? to negative 3 equals 14 over 4. Oops, no, I can reduce that even further. Let's divide by 4, right? 7 halves, which I could have done right up there. Um, so this reduced it down to 7 halves. Now, this was getting me a lot. I was having trouble with students doing this. If I had that equation, this equation right here, what would I do to solve for b? Subtract 7, right? Is everybody OK with me on that one? Everybody was with me? Subtract 7. You get the b by itself. So ladies and gentlemen, it amazes me. Just because this is a fraction, people say, oh, I, I don't know what to do. It's the same thing. 7 or 7 halves. This is a number. That's a number. This is just a fraction. So you subtract 7 halves on both sides. So now I have negative 3 minus 7 halves. And I know why you don't want to know what to do, because you do not want to be subtracting fractions. But basically, when subtracting fractions, all you have to do is make sure that both fractions have common denominators. So I write that over 1. And you can see that the common denominator between negative 3 over 1 and negative 7 over 2 is going to be 2. So you multiply by 2 over 2. And I get negative 6 halves minus 7 halves equals b. Now, negative 6 minus 7, Thomas, is going to be negative 13 divided by 2 equals b. So therefore, you guys can see I have b and I have m. Can I now write the equation of the line? Yes. Anybody have any questions? No questions.